Hey guys, it's Will here and welcome to what is going to be the first of a number of videos I'm going to be doing, painting the models from Death Watch Overkill. Now I'm starting today with one of the Gene Stealer models, this is one of the Pure Strains. And the reason I've started with the Pure Strain is because I already know exactly how I'm going to paint this guy, I don't need to do any test work, so he's going to be the easiest one to do a video for straight away. Now in terms of the paint scheme itself, I'm not going to try and follow the colours they've used um, in the official GW artwork. Instead I'm going to go for a High Fleet Kraken scheme. Now there's uh, three reasons for this. One, I just happen to like the High Fleet Kraken look. Two, I already know exactly how I'm going to paint that. I've got a good scheme that works very nicely for it but it's also very quick. And uh, thirdly, it's, um, these models are going to form part of Sam's Tyranid Army which is already painted as High Fleet Kraken. So uh, as you can see I've built the model completely and I've painted him or I've uh, base coated him in Citadel Corax white spray. Now this is a, a good way to um, start off the model because the spray primer has very good adherence and it helps the other paints adhere to the model but um, it doesn't give quite perfect coverage. Now normally this wouldn't be a problem because we would then be painting other colours over but the first colour I really want to use on this is an ink wash. And ink wash over slightly suboptimal coverage just isn't going to work. So what I'm going to have to do to finish preparing the model is give him a proper white base coat. And for this I'm going to use the Citadel base white paint, Ceramite White. And so I'm just going to go ahead and paint um, some of this over the whole model, aiming to uh, just get really good coverage is at this stage you don't have to be neat just add a little bit of water to the white and then uh, then just start painting it over everywhere just to make sure the whole model is completely whited out because as like I say this is going to get an all over ink wash before we do anything else so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish priming this guy and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to do the uh, the shading and highlighting on there Okay, so now our Gene Stealer is looking um, nice and white and got, like I say, really good coverage on there. Um, we can go ahead and apply the first of the ink wash. Now, this technique is going to use a number of ink washes, and the first one is going to be this one here, Seraphim Sepia. This will give it sort of an almost um, like flesh tone type appearance. Um, and the idea of this is just to paint it across the whole model. Um, so you want to get a reasonable amount on your brush and just paint it over every single part of this Gene Stealer. Now the great thing about these Tyranid models is they have loads of texture so the ink wash will, uh, will go into the recesses and shade it down while at the same time leaving the, the raised parts much lighter. So it will essentially do the same work as sort of a layered highlight but in one or two coats of, of ink wash. Now this is particularly important for painting Tyranids because if you know anything about Tyranids you know they come in big hordes. You don't get one or two Tyranids most of the time, you get a whole horde of the things. So for an army you're going to want to paint loads of them quickly. So using this really cuts down the, uh, cuts down the painting time and allows you to get a, get a Tyranid army out on the table relatively quickly while still looking pretty good. Now one thing to watch out for with this is when it starts to pull, like here, sometimes you'll get a little bit too much in the recesses. And in that case just wipe your brush off and just sort of pull the excess paint out of there. If you're not sure quite how much to apply, apply a little bit less because you can always come back and add more paint at the end. You know, once it's dry you can come back and do a second layer over some of the parts. 
but you can't um, can't really take it away once it's dry so if in doubt go for a conservative approach on how much to do and apply a second coat if needed so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this all off on camera I think because as I say this is a, a nice quick technique for getting your nids done I actually developed this um, well adapted it from something Beasts of War showed on their um, tutorial back a long time ago when the 5th edition Tyranid Codex came out and uh, yeah just adapted the scheme slightly but this sort of base of washing it with a sepia wash was uh, yeah not my own idea but one I've used extensively for my Tyranids back when Sam's Tyranids were my Tyranids and uh, produces very nice results so there we go that is our gene stealer basically washed all over I'm going to let him dry now and then uh, come back and show you what we do next. Okay, so uh, now that shade has dried, we can see that the uh, the model's looking pretty nice already. You've got a nice contrast between the very light raised areas and the very dark recesses. And that is all you need to do for the main part of the skin on this model, just a single ink wash over white, which is why this technique is so good for speed painting a large number of models. Now next thing I'm going to work on is the carapaced parts. Now these are going to be red to go in with the High Fleet Kraken scheme and again we're going to be using a heavy use of ink washes here. But to start off with I'm going to base coat them in this colour here which is Blazing Orange. It's one of the old GW colours. I think there is a, a modern equivalent but I don't know the name of it but it's just sort of a, a medium orange tone. And all I'm going to do with this is just paint a, th a, paint a layer of this over all the armor panels, you know, the bits that are going to be like the, the chitinous armor of this gene stealer. Um, it's looking a little bit funny, the light doesn't look quite right here, but uh, I can see when I'm doing this it's actually uh, looking how it should do. The idea is just uh, to get a layer of this, um, this orange paint down over all the parts that are eventually going to be red. I think I've had a little bit too much water there. So if um, the first coat doesn't cover it fully you can always come back and do a second one. So that areas I'm doing for this are going to be along the um, along the back here where it's got this sort of chitinous armour and also on the, um, the head crest here that's all going to be uh, be orange and again with this it's just important to be uh, be neat with it just getting the bits you want because you don't want to mix, uh, mess up the shading that you've already done but at the same time you need to sort of get make sure you get good coverage and getting in all the cracks and the recesses because uh, we're going to be applying a few layers of shade over the top of this and we want it to uh, to look really nice and just go in under the uh, the carapace there as well I'm not going to do the underside or any of the arms in this it's just going to be like the back carapace and the head crest so I'm going to go and finish that up and then show you what ink washes we're going to use for it. So that coat of orange has primed the model ready for the next wash and the first colour that I'm going to use for this is Sharaborg Crimson. Now when I originally designed this scheme I used to use Bar Red for it but they don't make that anymore so I'm giving Sharaborg Crimson which is the closest equivalent a go. So this is quite a deep red, possibly a little bit darker than the old colour I used to use. Um, but I'm going to give it a go and see how this turns out. So I'm going to apply this over all the bits that we've just painted orange. So along all these carapace sections. But I'm also going to apply it into the recesses along the back here. Um, to give them a sort of a, a deep red look. So like I say this is actually the first time I've tried this colour out on, on a gene stealer. I've used it for other things before. But hopefully this should... Uh, should work. I always remember when I used to do this with, with Bar Red um, I had to do two coats to get it to look right so I'm expecting to have to do that again so we just want to go along all the bits that are orange and just adjust the light a bit there, that's better um, to basically make them sort of shaded in this red um, being careful not to get it on any of the bits that are meant to stay the original skin tone there we go, that's looking nice. Um, and obviously if you want to paint your hive fleet in a different way, you can just switch out some of these colours. For example, 
um, you could give them blue carapaces or um, base them in something like Ulthuan grey and then wash with um, Drakenhof nightshade might work quite nicely or um, you could switch these colours around perhaps do the red on the body and then a, a different colour on the carapace but there we go, I'm just going to put it on the uh, the head as well, this sort of like head crest, getting in all the uh, the cracks and crevices there. There we go, so by the looks of it this is going to need a second coat, but that's absolutely fine. I was expecting that. Better to do two thin coats than one thick coat, especially with ink washes, because all you'll do if you do really thick coats is the recesses will stay sort of permanently glossy looking which isn't isn't what we want with this so there we go I'm going to let that dry and then come back and uh, do a second coat on that in just a few minutes so now we can see that two washes of Sharable Crimson has uh, brought the orange down to uh, this red colour instead so that's looking quite nice but it's not quite as dark as I'd like it to be so I'm just going to finish it off with one final ink wash and this is going to be with Agrax Earthshade and this is going to be a very careful ink wash um, because I don't want to use too much of it and also I don't want to get it in these um, like ribbed sections I just want to do it on the, uh, the very plated bits so it's just a very really light ink wash of this I'm not, be, I'm not using too much being careful to uh, keep it fairly light so it's just really going into the the recesses of this model and just darkening it down a shade um, just to bring it into line with what I know the rest of the army is looking like um, so ooh, that's a little bit too much there but if you do that you can just uh, wipe the paint off your brush and then use it to sponge up the excess nice thing about these uh, ink washes is they do take a while to dry so if you do make a mistake you can clear it up before it's had time to uh, become a problem so yeah just uh, doing that and that's going to just uh, darken him all down to bring him into line with the rest of the army and so although i'm applying three ink washes to this carapace section it's not going to have the glossy almost over overly shiny effect you can sometimes get with ink washes and that's because i'm being careful not to use too much i found in the past if i've used a very heavy wash um, the recesses really shine um, which isn't what we want we just want to uh, want it to dull everything down in the recesses so there we go that is that done so I'm going to let him dry now and then we've just got a few final details to do and our gene stealer will be finished so now that the main body of this gene stealer is done um, I'm going to start working on the details and the first detail I'm going to do is the claws uh, for this I'm going to use Mephiston Red as the base colour I've already got some on my palette so I'm just going to go ahead and paint a layer of this carefully onto all the claws um, so for this you're just wanting a nice neat layer that's going to uh, cover the whole claw without getting on the, uh, the surrounding skin because obviously you've already uh, you've already done that in the um, Seraphim Sepia, so we don't need to uh, we'll darken that up or change that at all. We just want to do the actual actual claw sections, and it's worth just turning the model to get it to the right angle to do the bits you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on all the claws, both um, the sort of the hand claws and also the ones on his feet, and then I'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. Then to add a bit of depth of shade to the claws, we're going to give them another ink wash and this is going to be back to Agrax Earthshade and that's just going to be applied over each and every claw, again being careful not to get it on the, uh, the rest of the model. So uh, yeah, this will uh, darken them down a little bit, but because it's uh, obviously a wash, it will focus on the, um, the sort of the recessed areas, oh, sorry, um, leaving the... Uh, raised parts of the claws that bit brighter which will uh, help to uh, give them a highlight as well as a shade as it were because the uh, the under colour the Mephiston red will actually act as the highlight colour while the washed parts act as the shade so with um, 
very sort of detailed defined claws like you get on those sort of uh, these Tyranid models that's really all you need to do you don't need to worry about edge highlighting the claws you can get away with this now it wouldn't work on on everything but certainly for for Tyranids because of the amount of detail plus obviously the amount that you need this technique is absolutely perfect so uh, I'm just going to do his feet as well don't worry about the rest of the base because I'm going to tidy that up um, when I've finished and then just these uh, back ones as well just give him maybe a nice coat of this to shade them all up then like any ink wash this is going to need a little bit of time to dry so I'm going to uh, leave that to dry and then come back and show you the next details that we're going to work on. Okay so as you might have seen ink washes are somewhat of a, a running theme with this paint scheme um, and we're going to do one more now. This should be the last ink wash I do on here and essentially what we're going to be doing is filling in all these little detailed parts. See we've got these like um, like ribbed under sections under the skin um, like in here it's almost like the inner muscles are visible through the uh, through the outer carapace. So I'm going to give these a wash of Cherubourg Crimson um, and this is going to be just applied very carefully into those recessed parts leaving the surrounding area a little bit more uh, you know in the original colour. So the idea here is just to give these parts a little bit of definition make them points of interest if you were. Um, and yeah they're just uh, by doing them in this red, it's keep um, and using it as a wash, it matches them in with the other um, other parts of the model. You know, doesn't um, mean they stand out excessively, but just sort of makes them a little bit different. And also, the uh, the nature of the wash allows it to uh, to pick out the detail in moments rather than having to base coat, shade, and highlight each area. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish all that off. Um, I'm also going to do the tongue in this colour to give it some uh, some definition and it doesn't matter at this stage if you get a little bit of this on the teeth as well because I'm going to come back and do those in a separate colour but um, just for now get the tongue with this. Now in one of the comments on a, one of my earlier videos someone mentioned about the um, the classic blue and purple scheme that the Gene Steelers are shown in on the um, uh, like the GW box art and uh, you could totally use this scheme, this sort of this style of using ink washes to uh, to achieve that. Obviously, you'd use different ink washes, perhaps apply them in a different order, but you know ultimately it's the same type of paint on the same same details of the model. So in theory, you could have a bit of an experiment and find out which uh, washes and base coats work, and achieve exactly the same sort of effect, but. Uh, for a different Hive Fleet's colour scheme. So uh, yeah, um, person who commented about that, you know who you are, thanks for your comment and uh, yeah that's, uh, that's a possible idea. If I get time or a spare gene stealer I might even see if I can uh, work out a paint scheme for that, that would be, be quite cool to uh, show you an alternative way of doing these but obviously I'm going to need to get my hands on another gene stealer. And yes, there are two in the box, but obviously these actually belong to Sam, so uh, I'm just painting them for him. He's very kindly let me uh, borrow this one for the painting tutorial. And obviously I'm colour matching it to his uh, his existing army, which as I've said before, was originally my army. So this is a paint scheme I used way back in the day. But there we go. I think that is all the little, uh, like little bits of muscle fibre painted there. Um, and so I'm going to leave that a little bit of time to dry now and then just show you the final details on the teeth and eyes. Okay, so the next bit to paint is going to be the eyes and uh, you can just um, paint them black. That would just uh, give sort of a beady eyed little appearance, um, somewhat uh, malevolent. But I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated with the eyes on this guy. Um, and to start with, I'm going to base coat the whole inside of the eye with Avalanche Sunset, the uh, sort of the dark mustard yellow base paint. So the idea here is just to get the whole of the inside of the eye socket in this yellow colour. Now it's a little bit fiddly to do on camera, but I'm going to see if I can uh, get it. There we go. That's coming along nicely. You do have to be careful not to get it on the uh, on the surrounding skin. 
but uh, yeah there we go just base coat the eyes in this then within that um, area that you've painted yellow you just want to paint like the the actual eyeball itself and for that i'm going to use evil sun scarlet um, and you're just wanting to put a small amount in the middle of the eye leaving the surrounding area in the yellow now this is a little fiddly to do but the idea is just like a little uh, dot of that in the middle there we go and on the other side as well there we are. and uh, if you're having trouble doing it you know you can always uh, just um, redo it and redo the base and start again but uh, no there we go that's uh, that's worked this time now um, for larger Tyranid models what I would then do is a tiny dot of black inside that but on this model it's just going to be far too small and the black dot is either going to be too small to notice or so big that it blots out the red part so I'm going to leave the eyes for that now and then go on to the last part which is going to be the teeth okay so for the teeth I'm going to use this colour here which I believe is a shabty bone but it's lost its label so it might actually be screaming skull I'm not sure but the idea is it's sort of a, a creamy bony sort of colour so just getting a little bit of that on the brush and just going to pick out each of this guy's teeth in turn being careful to leave the uh, the red in uh, the red of the mouth in the recesses just uh, you know picking out the each individual tooth and on this particular gene stealer the tongue also has a mouth on it so I'm going to do that the sort of the beak part of that in this uh, this bone colour as well just flip him over and do the other side Okay. We have it, and just check around the front. Make sure it's all uh, all in focus and all done. Yeah, there we go. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, the start of the teeth. And then the last thing to do is just to highlight those teeth. Going to use. Uh, just a pure white for this um, and a very small brush and just put a little flick of, of white paint on the top of each of the teeth just to uh, make them stand out being careful to leave a good amount of the the bone colour showing through this is a little fiddly to see on the camera but you can kind of get get the impression it's just giving a, a little highlight to each of the teeth just so they uh, they stand out and look suitably sharp and menacing for this uh, most deadly of alien predators no pun intended there we go so that is basically our little gene stealer done now now if they haven't based him yet um, I would just sort of go for my uh, you know whatever standard basing you use for your army I might um, actually use this guy's base for a a separate basing tutorial but there we go that is one quick and easy gene stealer now as I said this isn't necessarily a sort of a competition level painting standard this is just um, quick and easy get it done to add to an army you know with this scheme you can get a pretty large Tyranid army painted fairly quickly so I uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, any comments criticisms questions leave them in the comments section Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon.